Yes, of course. In front of, can we, all, can we just agree right now and, and make this canon and fact that this is far and away the most metal background that any band has played at in all of South by Southwest history? Yes. I mean, hold on, is it fair to say that you guys brought that house down? Yeah! yeah! I say go, 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 go! Ladies, gentlemen, and others, welcome to Cord Killers, our mission to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution. So whether you want to co cut, shave, trim, pare back your cord, you can watch what you want, when you want, where you want it, on any device you please. I'm Tom Merritt. Yeah, and that is true, unless you wanted to be there live when we did our Diamond Club TV launch event at South by Southwest in Austin, in Austin Texas. I'm going to start calling it Oxen, Texas, for the record, yeah, well, mainly because it's in easy a, to a little known sub subdivision of called Oxen. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Tom Merritt, as you can tell from my scraggly ass voice, um, I'm still deep in the thick of one of the biggest mixes of the Internet made alive in Austin, Texas. But you sound like you have recovered rather well, sir. I'm doing great, Brian. <laughs> Not tired at all. It's, it's, it's weird because, I'm like yesterday, not too old. To stay up till five in the morning talking <laughs> budgets with Brian Brushwood. Let me tell you. And then, although you did chicken out on playing laser tag with my daughter afterwards. Oh, the next man, day it was I was a... afraid I would vomit on your daughter if I played <laughs> laser tag. So I did excuse myself. Uh, look, I'm not gonna lie, Tom. That was legitimately the best party I've seen in the last half year, and I can't thank everyone. Or I'm sorry, last half decade. <laughs> that I can't thank everyone enough for who came out but none of that is why people are tuning in no no we i want to thank you for having us all out there for putting the diamond club tv event it was amazing a big thanks to your invisible wife who is the best host on the planet yeah but today we have pressing matters we have got eck on the show from hockeybuzz.com to join us and talk to you you're you're a cord massacre yourself right eck oh big time big time i am yes indeed He's a mass murderer of cords. He's like so hardcore, <laughs> like he's wanted in six states for the uh, wholesale slaughter <laughs> of cords. Whatever cords I don't break, my dog chews in half. So yeah. <laughs> you guys There's are like a superhero little, little team. Like short thirty ohm cable out there. It's like hockey blogger killed my cord paw. <laughs> he did kill an air hockey table. That was not good. That's good. Uh, well, cool. So, and you're in Canada, is that right? No. No, I'm in no. Philadelphia. Oh, you're just I'm a hockey blogger. Wait, wait, I, I love just the fact. I'm, hey, man. Just because I write about hockey does not. Yeah, mean that's hockey. Why did I, why They're did not I all the same, all right? Moves. I know you're not from Canada, but. See, this is look like, I'm sorry, Eklund, this is just the way Tom was raised. He's like, I can't tell one <laughs> hockey blogger from another. They're all Canadian. <laughs> so you're I Russian, spend a lot of time. <laughs> yes, not, I spend right? a lot of time talking Finish? to Canadians, that's for sure. But no, I am not indeed in Canada. I thought maybe we had talked about the differences in cord cutting in Canada for some reason. Maybe that's no, we did uh, for sure because I, I get that question a lot because I do a lot of technology stuff on my blog as well. So I do there is there is a huge difference in Canada for sure. Yeah, well, we got lots of stuff to talk about today. So Brian, shall we get right into the primary target? No, wait, yes, go. Red, no, blue. Uh, Big story of the week happened pretty early last week. Dish has the right to use some of Disney's most valuable networks in a web television service if it so chooses to launch one. In exchange, Dish is going to limit the auto-hop DVR feature for Disney networks. Uh, that's the one that lets it skip channels. Here's from the press release. The extensive and expanded distribution agreement grants Dish the right to stream cleared linear and video-on-demand content from the ABC-owned broadcast stations... ABC Family, Disney Channel, ESPN, and ESPN2 as part of an internet-delivered, IP-based, multi-channel offering. So this was weird to me. Like, on the one hand, the whole reason that we love covering Dish, or I say we, but certainly me, is the fact that being in third place, they kind of have nothing to lose, so they keep doing all these punk rock maneuvers, like giving the middle finger to all of the main networks and cutting out the, uh, you know, the, the, the commercials with the auto-hop feature or whatever. This is a case where... What was being settled in the courts suddenly just got settled with a handshake where they're all like, look, we well, hate you're looking you're at you're looking at the other half of the deal. And that almost feels like picking a fight because you're jumping right over the historic nature of the first part of this agreement. I'm well, not saying you're wrong true. about the second part, but this is the first deal 
that has been struck. Yes, no, and and you you are correct. You are correct. But but as you would imagine, Tom, uh, the, uh, the the I don't know. It's like this is the kind of thing where. You're right. If I'm on the outside, if I'm going to report the news, the news, of course, is that this deal has been struck. But but I mean, you know me, I'm looking on the fringes trying to figure out the. But every every story we talk about, like, well, Intel gave up on on cue because they couldn't strike the deals. Apple's still waiting on the television because they can't strike the deals. Nobody can strike the deals. This is this is the day. This is the day everybody will point back to and go. Dish was the first one to get one. Eck, do you think we'll actually see a service from Dish, though? I do not. <laughs> and, and really, I'll tell you why, because I think these kind of deals I, don't I, get struck until the they don't need to be struck. Um, if that makes any sense. It, it feels like it's got, we've got, I mean, the one thing I will say about this is going with ABC or Disney, which is basically ABC, right, is, uh, was a good idea because Comcast is NBC. And eventually they'll, they'll probably end up getting Comcast too because they'll ha Comcast will have to give them NBC or else they will be considered some sort of monopoly. So that's a good idea. I just have a feeling as if, that by the time this actually hits, something else will fill this role. You know, and I think that's a good point because, and we've talked about this on the show, in some ways, all of these negotiations, all of these legal maneuverings or whatever, uh, I, I have said that I strongly suspect that none of them, they really mean. I think at the end of the day, they understand that everything's changing. The landscape is going uh, to, to, to a new direction. Uh, they're only goal with the legal maneuverings is to slow everything down and just delay long enough for shareholders to get comfortable with the idea of all of a sudden networks don't mean anything except for a brand. If ABC is smart, if Disney's smart, uh, which of course they are, they're going to recognize that distribution is a sucker's game. You don't want to be the pipe. You want to be the name that the label that's on the pipe. Well, you want to be making the content, though, and that's that's what ABC yeah. ESPN is, and 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 I think you're right about that. I mean, eventually, the idea of 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 the system that requires the people to make a product and then sell it to a channel that then bundle in the channels and they give it to a distributor who then is a multi-channel operator that then that's going to simplify for sure. Agree. But this, to, I still agree. I still think that this is a significant step because Directv immediately came out and said, "Hey, we're in talks with Disney too." We're going to do something like this. And then CEO Lowell McAdam of Verizon, they're the folks who bought on cue from Intel, said, I have personally had discussions with the CEOs of the large content companies. He's very optimistic that they're going to be doing it. So instead of no, nothing but rumors and people saying, no, no deals are getting struck, the pendulum just seems to have swung last week to... OK, I think we may have figured out how to strike some deals. Well, here's the here's the thing. And this is this is the thing about pendulums is they never swing right at the moment that you're like, oh, I think this is a good idea. They uh, they swing far after that long into that it about is, pendulums. It is it is <laughs> like Damn, like pendulums know. don't start swinging to where they belong until it's like it is utterly ridiculous that it has been this long and we still haven't gotten the thing we want. This is why and how revolutions happen, right, is because it's so obvious to everyone one that this is an idiotic situation that you're in that finally people stand up and do something and maybe this is the beginning of what we're seeing there i th i personally think that being cynical of course that it reminds me of franklin the franklin institute in philadelphia has this really cool science exhibit where there's this giant pendulum to continue on that metaphor for a second that hangs down and it knocks over these pedestal these, these little um, pedestals dur during the day and in that they say that because it's knocking over those pedestals, you can tell the earth is revolving. Well, we already know the earth is revolving, and that's what this feels like to me. It feels like, okay, yeah, sure, we have this, but I have a feeling we're just hearing about it now because so, it's suddenly no, this hip is to talk great. About this it. is great. So like like the individual item getting knocked over is the news flash that things are yeah. changing. But really, if you look through it, you're like news flash, the earth turns, which is I, stupid. Well, hold on now. I think when Michelle Foucault first set up that type of pendulum for the very <laughs> first time and people saw that it actually worked. Well, okay, but yeah, there was no, some no, no, no. excitement. But, 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 no, but really I, I, I follow, awesome. I follow Eck on this. I, I think he's right. I just uh, think we've the, known, I think they've known I, about I, this I don't know. I think you guys now. are, I think, you guys are being the, the folks who are like, you know, we should have had this years ago. And it's like, well, okay, but now we might actually get it. I All think right. that's exciting. And, and in that regard, you are a hundred percent right. We are those guys and I should be better. <laughs> But I'm not. <laughs> and so to me, again, like I'm going to point uh, and let, let's talk about this hopper side of the thing. Like how much of the fact that 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 dish, I mean, is this deal uh, a payoff for the investment of taking the risky move of doing the hopper to begin with? Eklund, do you think do you think that the hopper how much do you think the hopper aspect of things has to do with this? 
it's so messed up because when you think about the hoppers, this cool technology, right, that everybody wants, so we can skip past pick skip past commercials, what they put onto the market for us, and now in this deal, they're taking it away. Um, that that to me is that you can't skip through commercials. Well, so you know, I think that's just uh, looking at Leon Foucault's pendulum again and saying the Earth is turning. You know, commercials don't even matter anymore. We're not even going to be right. able to what? skip commercials in the future. So that that's just old technology that's going to die anyway. No. Okay, first of all, if, uh, also, tell, I had tell to me. correct myself because it wasn't Michelle Foucault. Was it? All right, t- <laughs> tell me, tell me that that your sarcasm meter is up to eleven on this. You're telling me that that commercials are going away, really? Well, if a internet streaming, an internet only streaming video package is not exciting. Then the ability to skip commercials on a DVR, which is antiquated, is not, uh, but, 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 but not the ability to skip the commercials. The automated removal of commercials, which is from now, a multilinear con- traditional right. MSO, like how, that's even older than the internet only broadcast package that you got now now tell me this like Eklund would you be yeah. down for your DVR let's say part of this deal is and I see people in there and I think the best comment came from perfect face for radio in the chat let me see if I can read it for a uh, he says if you're a customer that got hopper for the hopper then this is boo but if you're already a cord cutter or a cord trimmer that isn't a hopper user then this is yay and it's it's all about perspective which I think is right uh, yeah. If we were yeah. to see a shift, compromise, a middle ground, would you be comfortable with traditional DVRs offering not so much a hopper, you know, automatic editing out of commercials, but instead something closer to like the uh, the YouTube five four three two one skip now button? Would would you be down with that on a DVR? Or would that make you mad? No, I think that that would be great. Um, I would rather have the skip commercial thing, although it feels kind of weird to me. I always look, I, the marketer in me always says, oh, you know, are they going to get something cool in before the five, four, three, two, one? You know, yeah. is something going to actually happen there? That's what I'm always thinking. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, but, at the end of the day, right, it's yeah. the, the advertisers that are paying for the content. And so it's like, I don't want to say, I think all of us agree, we want there to be enough money to justify making the content, but none of us want right. that it to be so GD annoying. <laughs> Right. And you know what was interesting last night on Cosmos, which we'll talk about later, I'm sure, but the commercials, because we did DVR and I'm fast forwarding through it with my kids, but the commercials were set in a similar tone to the show itself. Yeah. And it made it very hard to fast forward through the commercials. Well, and they also they also framed several of the commercials as behind the scenes featurettes. They're like, right. oh, did you like you know the production team? Y'all use galaxies. Well, that that is an interesting side note because I watched it on Fox.com. Uh, oh, so you on, didn't see any on of the that. internet, yeah? And the the commercials were so tone deaf, unrelated, <laughs> like Tresemme hairstyling, because you love that. Just got out of bed. No, I, I'll I'll say this much, and and I don't think this is uh, this is stuff I had meant to say in spoiler in time, but but I don't think it's spoilery to the content of Cosmos. <laughs> For those of you, uh, spoiler alert: the Cosmos exists. <laughs> uh, the uh, oh, whoa, <laughs> yes, whoa, back it up, <laughs> Lord. Uh, I, it was it was. Really astonishing to watch that kind of media event that was multi-channel uh, platform, you know, whatever a multi, you know, uh, Nat Geo chipped in. You had you had uh, Fox and and everything coming together to create real life appointment viewing. That for the first time in uh, man half a decade since I've had a party that was as awesome as ours, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, we found ourselves tuning in using our over the air antenna and just watching real time. And when the commercials came on. I turned down the volume and we all chit chatted about what we saw on Cosmos. That to me is uh, really extraordinary, and I and, and I would imagine that you have to program specific ads to that kind of community event. See, but well, that's and creativity, think, and that's so, good, and right? You should have programmed better ads online, but it shows that they're not even really thinking about online anymore. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, right yet, not yet anymore. Before we get off of, of this into our secondary target, though, I want to ask you guys because I, I think this may have got lost in the fun. Uh, do you think that it is unnecessary or invaluable uh, to have a linear programming option available internet only? Well, uh, one of the stories, if I'm not mistaken, uh, later on regarding BBC Three will address exactly that. And um, I, I, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, you know, of course, we don't. Do, do I personally care? No. Like, I want all of my stuff to be offline. I, I either want it offline or I want special. To be honest, in a perfect world, I want every single thing I do to be offline on demand, except for a very specific category of event that is universally agreed that we all want to watch together at the same time 
Cosmos is certainly one of those. Sporting events is certainly one so of those. So when you say offline, you mean without an internet connection, or you mean no? No, no, like no I'm, I'm sorry. When I say, I guess when I say offline, I mean independent of the network, right? I, I, I mean like uh, just the ability to like whether it's okay. something you because what Dish got the right to is not only to stream linear, so that you wouldn't have to even have your antenna, but also on demand, which means you can pick when you watch it. Yeah, to me, like the first half of that is utterly irrelevant. It the on demand is the just only said part last of that. Night, you wanted you watched it in real time. Well, I mean, hmm. yes. Look, man, I could be a hypocrite because that means I'm right on both sides. Your Honor, I submit to you. <laughs> I will save. I will save Brian from his hypocrisy for a second and say that I do ing- indeed agree. See, I, I've been I've hung around with a lot of these Comcast people, and and Comcast is in is in my city here, so I know a lot of people who work for Comcast, and they own the Flyers too. They own the Philadelphia Flyers. Comcast does, so I know a lot of people out there, and I can tell you that this is just what well, all we're seeing here is I think a, a a snippet into the fact that they are ahead of where we think they are on this. Yes, they're they're thinking about this already. They've been thinking about it for a long time. I mean, we can already get Disney on our iPad. We can already get ESPN on our iPad. So. The, well, all those things are kind of pointless. Yeah, but you got to log in with the ID of a cable company. Yeah. Again, or again, sure. look, that's not going away. Like, like we could talk about how this deal is a landmark deal, and it is newsworthy, and that it's unusual. But at the end of the day, as we progress forward, I am utterly convinced that the idea of cable authentication will be the fig leaf that becomes the standard, and that basically, we're, again, this is my prediction, sometime in the next year, maybe two, expect a virtual cable authenticator. Like, you could subscribe for $23 a month, and now and it'll be a yeah, cable company that has no Dish's cable. it'll be called Dish's new service with ABC that allows you to stream linear programming and on demand, and right. now you can also authenticate for the ABC and Disney right. apps. I mean, it slots right in. That's uh, I love the fact that you were able to say I was right so eloquently. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our secondary target. Uh, one thing you might not be able to get in the future is Aereo, the service that allows you to get over-the-air broadcasts uh, streamed over the Internet, which I don't think Brian's going to be all that interested in because he doesn't care about streaming things in, in real time. But. All right, except for the fact that I watched – look, I told you, I'm a hypocrite. That's fine. Look, I'm, I'm – I mean, Brian may not be interested in it. Brian, on the other hand, is going to be all over this. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> From now on, that's how you need to express it. <laughs> Uh, Justice Department lawyers have weighed in on the side of the broadcasters in this case for the upcoming April 22nd Supreme Court hearing. Justice Department lawyers argued that Aereo's broadcast television streaming service infringes on broadcasters' copyrights and asked the court to reverse a lower court decision that found in favor of the startup. Also in that Utah case where uh, both Utah and Denver versions of Aereo were ruled to be illegal and an injunction or ruled to be probably illegal and therefore an injunction was put against them they had appealed for a stay so they were still operating uh but a panel of judges on the federal court denied ario's emergency motion to stay the injunction saying quote ario has not made a strong showing that it is likely to succeed on the merits of its appeal uh so that's it you're right. going to lose ario in salt lake city and denver now tom um uh, as we all know you are a lawyer who has definitely passed the bar in all 50 I'm states. not either of those things. Carry on. Okay. Uh, I understand you have to say that legally because you're a lawyer, but <laughs> the, my question is... Um, I'm a real captain, uh, Brian. The, the, this this uh, uh, overturn of injunction. Now, if I, if I understood the landscape correctly, up until this point, what we had was we had the fact that, we, number one, we know that Aereo is going to go to the Supreme Court to right. for that business uh we know that previous to that a key district including what three five however many states said no way you're pretty much jerks we're shutting it down mm-hmm. uh, but then also they said uh okay you're still jerks and we're still shutting you down but we don't want to disrupt the customers so we'll let you go for two more weeks and this is uh, i assume a, a, a an attempt to stop the injunction. No, I am not. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I I think I see your confusion. They the the federal court uh, under the premise of Jerko Contendo. Jerko uh, Contendo, said, yeah, wait, what? Jerks, and you can't do this anymore. <laughs> Is that a Finnish guy? Jerko Contendo. <laughs> Jerko Contendo. Yeah, Contendo. It's, it's from the Latin. Yeah. Uh, and, and and they they went to uh, and then Ario said, well, we're going to appeal that decision. And so what the court said was, all right, 
you're going to appeal. You might win on appeal. So we're going to let you continue to do your service rather than have you shut it down and then two weeks later after your appeal is heard, have to start it back up. We're, we, we understand that. So given the possibility you might win, you know, an overturn on appeal, we'll let you continue. So we won't enforce the injunction yet. But what this is saying is they went on appeal and the panel said, nope, first judge was right. You're uh, probably not going to win your case. And so the injunction stands and you have to stop broadcasting. Okay, so so there now does that mean because again, the news that we were reporting like 35 seconds ago was that uh, was that yes they are going to be shut down, but they uh, but they have a two week uh, grace period. So does well, this, they said you could have up to two weeks until your appeal is heard. Now now they've heard their appeal. So that's shut down. So it really is. Like if you're there, like as of today. I don't know. See, now timing wise, I have no idea. I okay. don't know how fast they have to comply, you know, what that's about. So that that you'd have to. You'd, Look, you'd it's have to really, it's like really hard for Scott me to Johnson. hear you right now over the sound of me typing down that the title of this episode is Jerko Contendo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, honestly, none of that stuff really matters unless you're in Salt Lake City or Denver, when it matters a lot. Uh, what matters is that this is another loss for Aereo, and they had been going into the Supreme Court with all wins until that first uh, Utah judge said, no, actually, we don't think that your service is going to be considered legal in a case. So April 22nd, with the U.S. on the side of the broadcasters, uh, with the cloud storage people sort of not taking sides, but weighing in and saying, look, however you decide this, you need to consider that if you rule too broadly, it could outlaw the ability to store your files online. Uh, because one of the contentions of the broadcasters is that the reason Aereo is illegal is because a copyrighted work is being distributed in multiple versions. And it doesn't matter if it's one-to-one. -one. And if the court were to say, yeah, that's absolutely right, it would become illegal for Dropbox to allow you to access your own MP3s, even if you have a license to Correct. them, yeah. because Dropbox wouldn't have a license to them. All right, let, let wow. me turn it over to Eklund here. Yeah, Eklund, wait, wait, chime in on this. To, to, to draw a parallel to the music industry, when I was in, the, I was in a band for years touring around um, on Mercury Records called Grey Eye Glances, and when I was touring around at the very end of our, um, in the, like the end of the 90s, the record industry was sort of falling apart like the TV industry is now. You don't and say. There was, a, uh, there was a time when we couldn't sell our own CDs at shows, but what we had to do is call the Tower Records in the city we were going to beforehand and order like 30 of them, go buy them, physically buy them, to bring them to our shows, and that was that's what this all feels like to me. This all feels like this crazy workaround to continue to continue a dying system. And at the same time, I believe that deep down, I think I think the television stations have already figured out what to do if they lose the ARIO case. I mean, I guess oh, sure. if I yeah. was going to interject and say that there's a difference, and again, I don't know this, and you're you obviously, especially having been somebody there in the business, would know better than me. But it seems to me like uh, whereas your situation was a matter of the reason you had to order your own CDs from the local Tower Records was because of your civil license because of the contract you had with your providers whereas Aereo, uh, its entire system is built on the idea that there are uh you know when the dmca happened in the late 90s it, it changed it from a civil penalty to pirate to a criminal penalty and people started right. going to jail and so on I, right. I i suspect that the stakes are a little bit different in that but but again i i, I don't know i think what, what, what it was with us was it was a distribution thing it was they wanted tower records to sell the cds and make money Mm -hmm. So if we sold them at the shows ourselves, they wouldn't make money. And then they, the way of getting around it with us was saying, if we don't sell them at Tower Records, they won't get counted as sold CDs. So that and was a that, thing they played, game they played with us. That is very similar to what's going on in this case. Yeah. Because what Ario is saying is, I can hook up an antenna at home and I can watch the television without paying anybody. So all we're doing is helping people do that. And what right. the broadcaster is saying is, yeah, sort of, except really only older people do that, and we don't <laughs> care about them much because the advertisers don't pay a lot of money for older viewers. Uh, so we just kind of turn a blind eye, eye and eye for that. And the Tower Records here is the cable companies, and yep. they don't want to lose the money that they get out of the cable companies. Uh, and and so they're, they're willing to try to crush this because the cable companies are sitting there salivating, saying, well, crap, man, if we can just do this, what Aereo is doing with multiple antennas, then we don't have to pay anybody to access that over the air content. Uh, listen, hey. I'm sorry. You're going to have to give me a moment because I'm changing the title to Comcast is Tower Records. Give me just a moment. <laughs> and Tower oh, Records no. is no more, right? So that, at the end of the day, <laughs> I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? That, that was a failing system. This is a failing system. It's just a matter of 
can they come up with the right plan before it fails? Can, and do they have the smart enough? This is the other thing I've run into with these companies is the people who have been put in on these projects are usually people from the old old company, you know, and not the people who are in college right now who grew up with this internet world. So they don't know how to do it yet. And uh, that's the other thing. This is a race against one of the re people who actually understand this going to be empowered to do something about it. Yeah. Quite often uh, when technology innovations have happened throughout the years, uh, throughout history, what happens is you have the way it used to be and then the new way it can be. And you have the people who are invested in the way it used to be doing this slow dance of trying not to lose any money or advantage on their way to the way the new way it should be right uh, uh, and, and we use all kinds of metaphors for this like buggy whips and stuff all the time I, I maybe monks you know who wanted to do scripts trying to outlaw the printing press uh, is a good example I don't know but this is what's going on we are watching a dance that's why you guys are not wrong about the idea that the dish deal is not really all that big of a deal because eventually that kind of deal isn't going to matter right. I think you're right about that it matters during the day though and that's what we're, we're in yeah. the middle of it matters that they're admitting it on the dish deal that's the big thing that to me that they're admitting that this is a thing is the big part of that Tom look I know you are extraordinarily busy and I know you do a lot of audiobooks I know you read a lot of content you certainly wake up at 3 30 in the morning and start populating the cord killers doc every day along with the DTNS uh, but I, I swear man I, I got to give you homework and anyone who is listening right now, uh, uh, read The Master Switch because it is an amazing book that tells the story of communications, innovation over and over and over again, how, you know, David beats Goliath and then becomes Goliath, which has to look for the next David and so on. And uh, the, the best part about The Master Switch is the fact that it ends with the question, uh, is the internet different? Like everyone wants so very bad to believe that now that the internet's here and to be honest, there's evidence to support the idea that the internet's different because it certainly hasn't happened again. We've already watched before all of these, you know, you know, the, the AT&T squash the competition and then get broken apart by the, you know, baby bells and so on. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. The, the master switch is awesome, but do you know who's more awesome, Tom? Uh, wow. Um, I haven't. I mean, the chronology of tech history, which uh, basically writes down a bunch of those examples and when they happened uh, from the master switch is pretty awesome. But I, I have a feeling that's not what you're thinking. You about. know what? Last time I checked, those guys didn't donate a single dime to Cord Killers at patreon.com slash Cord Killers. 1,562 people donating to make this show a reality. How amazing is that, man? That's unbelievable. You know, uh, hats off so, to you guys. That's an amazing thing. Really, uh, honestly, it, it's incredible. I'm a donate. I've donated to all three sh all three shows that you guys are involved with in different ways. It's amazing. So, so here's what's weird to me, Eklund, is that we're here at South by Southwest, and we're talking to, uh, you know, everyone. We assumed everybody knew what Patreon was, and yeah. that it was a crowdfunding subscription model uh, way to essentially say, "How much do you like a thing? Give us whatever you think it's worth." Uh, but but everyone, uh, Baratunde, his jaw hit the floor. Uh, I, I you know we 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 spelled it all out for Veronica Belmont. Her her jaw hit the floor. Uh, I talked to Ryan Connolly over at Film Riot. He's freaking out. Uh, the ability to basically choose your own price for this and do so in a meaningful way that keeps the show on the air. And what I love about it is that if the show is genuinely worth a nickel for you. Uh, a nickel is 20 cents a month. That's $2 and 40 bucks, you know, a year. Uh, that adds up, man. And all we need is enough of you guys to hop in, go to uh, patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash cord killers. Give us a penny. You'll feel great. You'll be the first to hear all the news. It, it matters to us because you're on the email list and then that we can reach out to you when we have exciting things going on. That's what's amazing. Absolutely. Cannot thank people enough met a bunch of patrons at south by southwest uh and you are all quite a bit more beautiful than the people that weren't patrons I, yeah okay i i didn't want to be so gross as to point that out but it's like the fact uh, is like you guys smell true. nicer you're a little bit taller you mm -hmm. certainly have a better tan than those other yeah. you know guys way it's smarter just, uh, it's, it's just facts <laughs> but i'm, saying, I'm sorry it. newton said it best <laughs> look at this apple patrons are prettier <laughs> patreon.com slash card killers let's get into signals intelligence <laughs> Uh, 
What's the word, Buzz? Well, the word is you could not watch True Detective on HBO Go last night for love or money. Uh, in fact, Eileen, my wife, was trying to jump in and just watch the first episode, and she couldn't do that. HBO Go was brought to its knees by the overwhelming demand. In fact, HBO Go tweeted, due to overwhelmingly popular demand for True Detective, we've been made aware of an issue affecting some users. Please try again soon. And uh, eventually... It receded, and, and you could watch uh, HBO go again. I think my favorite response <laughs> was something uh, Brett the Amtrak of Rounceville pointed out he saw on Twitter where somebody says, HBO go isn't working. What is my father's uncle's cousin paying for? <laughs> <laughs> you know what fixes this problem completely? A coax cable going into your house. So you don't have to worry about this. I guess. All right. <laughs> wow. Shill for the no, man. I'm just much. saying. I'm just, no, you know, that's what there's, again, cynical. Yeah. Yeah. We can't have that many people watch HBO at the same time on the internet. It doesn't work. You know, but, but, but this is a really good question because like one of the things like up until this moment, HBO has enjoyed being able to play both sides of the fence. They were able to say, we're the ones who provide top notch uh, entertainment over the cable. Also, we're doing HBO go for free because we love you so much. And we're so thrilled that you're watching and we want you to be future HBO subscribers. But now and the two windows NT boxes that it runs off of will never be overwhelmed. That's the thing, <laughs> right? So now all of a sudden they're understanding that uh, financially they've had to throw a few bucks in order to offer this as what they call a value add that makes people feel good about it or in you know, reality, basically quiet the black market for piracy of HBO content. And uh, but now all of a sudden they're demanding customer service on one of their biggest points of pride. And so the question is, like, uh, it, it, is there any way this could damage their current attitude? Because we've seen them be very glib about how they're able to offer this service for free and they don't care if you share the passwords and they're so much better than stupid old Netflix because they're also on cable. Like all of a sudden it's like, uh, hey, jerks, are you doing this or not? Eklund? Yeah, no, that that is a good point. I, I agree. They're definitely going to have to beef it up, and they're going to have to hire more people for it. You know, that's you can tell it. And can you can can you imagine that off at the offices last night when this went down? They must have just been losing it. I mean, that's the worst case scenario for them. I yeah, I would like to balance this with the fact that this happened with Game of Thrones as well. It's not the first time it's happened. To HBO Go, and it is harder than it looks. Yeah, yeah. To keep these sorts of things going, uh, it's it's less to me them not providing customer service or, or not prioritizing it, but HBO realizing like, oh, Netflix is better at us than something, you know, and, and not that Netflix doesn't go down sometimes, but come on, guys, this happened to you already. You, That's a great you, point. you, you knew that folks were going to be streaming in for True Detective like crazy. Like if you if you were reading the buzz, right? You got you got to figure you got to brace yourself for that. Sometimes, though, even if you brace yourself for it, it's still bigger than you can handle. So. Is this the beginning of a longer term or is this the case where it's like uh, HBO Go looks at this or HBO in general looks at this and says, fine, we have three big must see events a year. We're going to deal with this three times a year. Change nothing. Do nothing. Keep going on. Oh, no. I think no, I think this is this is never. growing pains, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is just a this is just telling them they got to learn how to scale. You know, this is this yeah. is that's a new a new word for them. You know, basically, this is they've how had you learn how to before. scale. Having been an executive producer of a website and watching it get DDoSed yeah. and agonizing over it with engineers about what we can do to now never have this happen again, and then still having it happen again because people figured something out. This oh, one's yeah. easier to fix, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We just had it happen with us with the trade, the, the NHL trade deadlines. One of our biggest days of the year was last Wednesday, and um, yeah, we it's we have it happen every year, and it's a. Uh, it's nerve wracking to see if it's going to continue through. And then if you get DDoS, yeah, you're, then you're fighting even a bigger battle. All right, let's gear up, ladies and gentlemen, because we got a stick. It's not a hockey stick. Sorry, Eck. Yeah. Are you sure? I don't know. Let's take a look. Nope, that's definitely not a hockey stick. Those are robot arms. <laughs> robot Awkward. arms. But it is a Roku streaming stick, Brian. Oh! Oh, and remember when the Roku streaming stick first came out and we're like, well, it's kind of cool because it's a Roku and a stick, but it's you only have to have a TV with MHL and it's $100. Uh, well, all of those things have been solved. It's well, now 50 bucks, and it works in any HDMI port, so any television is going to be able to use it and it'll be available in April. Yeah, man, those were big limitations. The fact that it had to be Roku enabled, the fact that it did yeah. not come with a remote control, the fact that uh, everything you already mentioned, but now all of that for half the price, I'm down. You know what? They took it out of this thing. I have one of these um, 
this thing here, uh, which is a which is a little projector uh, that Roku puts out. It's put out by 3M actually, and it's an awesome thing. And in the back here, there was a. Uh, it's not in here right now. Which, by the way, uh, real oh, real quick, hold that up so we can describe it for the audio listeners. It's it's yeah. um. I don't know. It's like it's like, it looks like a, a a secret lover to R two D two or something. <laughs> exactly. It's a flat. It's a little projector. It's amazing. It's got. It's, it's funny. You can walk through the. It's it's wireless and it's also um, battery operated. We would walk through Disney World with this, actually projecting things onto I the swear ground. To God, oh, real real quick, Eklund. It's on a stick. It looks like a puppet. Can you can you maybe act out something for us about like a, looking like left and right. I got, oh wait! He, he, oh, of course, the because exactly, he actually right. also has an R two D two for them Obviously. to interact with and make love. Yes. Oh wow, this is a moment. <laughs> Can you put like the theme from Love Story or? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> this is one of, my, one of my favorite devices ever, though. And the but the thing in the back here, where it's not there now, I think my wife took it out of there. But um, there was a stick that was exactly like this Roku stick, and that's how you could get Roku on this. And you can pull it out too, and then have just an HDMI input in here, and then you could uh, put, Wait, plug any HDMI into it. So, so you're saying like you've had this device, you've secretly had the Roku stick before. I have. All that was. I, have. I know, and all my friends are jealous. So yeah, for sure. Wow. That's but amazing. you had the uh, not the MHL one. You had this new one. I you know, I had this this the new one was in this. Um, it looks exact. I mean, I don't know if it's the same. Oh, thing, I got you. It came with the projector. It because came with the projector. It built into the but like like you can't you couldn't you, buy the stick by itself. But right, you bought right. the, gotcha. the the projector that came with the stick. But you pulled it out of here. You see in the back here, there's a little HDMI it stuck right. right in there, and you pulled it pulled it right out of there. And uh, now I have it out of there because I was just plugging other HDMI things into did, here. Like, did you guys think to try plugging the stick into like your television set and see what happens? We did, and it worked. We did. It did work. Holy crap! So, you really did. You had you had the new so Roku this, stick ahead of time. Yeah, that's this amazing. has existed for a while, and I was waiting for them to do this. It was just one of those things. It's like, wow, well, that's great. We actually brought the stick with us to the beach one time because that instead of bringing a Roku. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. Cool. Anyway, Roku stick. Who doesn't love a Roku stick? I see what's under surveillance. <laughs> Smooth. That would it's be good. the next segment. There you go. See, this is, this is what, Tom, you got to build up to it. And there we go. Twitch to stream live E3 game announcements directly to your console. 2014 is the start of a three-year deal with the ESA, making it the official streaming partner for the trade show. According to Twist, broadca uh, Twitch, broadcast will be integrated into every facet of the show, news, interviews, behind the scenes, uh, right to your Xbox 360, Xbox One, or whatever browser you use on your desktop to stream Twitch. Won't be going to PS4, though, because t PS4 only allows you to see Twitch streams from other PS4 it originating streams. Man, you know what's funny what is doing. I was already like my my pre-planned statement according to this paper that I'm holding up for you guys right now. Uh, my pre-planned statement was mm -hmm. that uh, it's about time, but I don't even get to deliver this this scroll that I had. I don't even get to to read the speech I had because uh, freaking. Uh, you would think that platform ubiquity would be the rule of the day by now. It is ridiculous that. So many people are making it so difficult. I, I like. I don't even know who to blame on the PS4 one. Yeah, uh, but, uh, the PS4. Because I, because again, this feels like the first story of the show where you're, you, it's you're, you're going right for the negative. And yes, the big positive news here is we don't have a big announcement saying, well, we've partnered with this cable channel. We've got it going to Twitch, which is exactly where it should be. Uh, yeah. All right. Now, uh, first of all, I'll be the first to admit that I've got a problem with being the uh, uh, the uh, immediately going to the negative on this stuff. The uh, the important thing, though, is is number one. Yes, it is great that they finally figured out that the number one audience for a gaming expo is gamers. So congratulations. I'm glad you guys got there. And then they immediately turned around and like. Only they, this no, one third of gamers. That's not what happened. They didn't immediately turn around and do anything. Okay, all right, all right. The the PS4 Twitch thing has existed since the PS4 came out last November, and I don't remember hearing you complain about it up until now. No, 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 no. Okay, and, and first of all, uh, this is if okay. There there are multiple parts of the story, and and I don't know what the story is with Twitch and PS4 and so on. But the uh, but I do know that the fact that Twitch is the one managing the streams, getting console gaming news to console gamers is awesome and great. And there's nothing not rad about every, all of that. But ser seriously, really? All of PS4 just screwed? That's, uh, come on. Please, 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 That's please, not please. weird? 
That's what uh, Eklund, Eklund was chiming in saying, like, uh, I'm so disgusted by this story that I've dropped my Skype call. Oh, shoot. <laughs> He's like, he just dropped the Skype and went home. Yeah, he was just like, he was like, whatever, no PS4, I'm out of here. I'm going go to go watch a hockey game. Well, and I don't know who to blame on that PS4 part of it. That's just the way it launched. Uh, and I don't know if that's Sony saying, well, we want to host the streams and we don't have enough bandwidth, so we need to limit it somehow. I don't know what that's about. All I know is that Twitch is saying we're going to broadcast it on Twitch. And this is where Twitch is available. And one of the places it's available is the Xbox One and the Xbox 360. All right. Well, Eklund's back. Eklund, uh, real quick, like where, where's your head at on the console distribution of console news front? <laughs> It's also it doesn't PC sound game. like conflict of interest or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know where you guys were thinking there. I'm sorry I got attacked by R2-D2 who was trying to get to my projector. <laughs> he um, was just like, don't get between me and my love for your projector. We belong that, together. Uh, he's love struck. Yeah. That R2 is pretty insane. Um, yeah, I, I love Twitch. I mean, I'm a big Twitch. I, I watch Twitch all the time. I broadcast on Twitch, too. I uh, broadcast old... Um, I put together, you know, hockey games on um, EA Sports on NHL 95 or NHL 2014 last year. Just, and broadcast them out. I love Twitch, but it is interesting when you know we have uh, the company promoting itself like that. But I guess they have to. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna yeah. say, like in the history of Cord Killers, that was the smoothest we ever had a uh, guest leave us and come back. And before we move into front lines, <laughs> Tom, uh, yeah. uh, can we can we real quick thank our friends uh, in our ongoing hardware project over at uh, Doghouse Systems? Well, sure. Uh, I, I think we're moving into phase two now. Yeah, man. Assist. We got an yeah. email saying, thank you, our underlings. We are Doghouse Systems. And to which we responded, well, we're not your underlings. We're partners on this. And you came to us. And they're like, silence, Dave. And we said, uh, wow, this is dark. And they're like, we have completed our intelligence gathering. We have learned what people want from a set-top box device in order to watch what they want, when they want, when we tell them to. And we said, well, that's not our, so they're like, silence. <laughs> uh, but uh, as, what exactly did that email say, Tom? Well, let me find it. No. Okay, that's uh, fine. In the meantime, let me real quick. exactly what it said, but essentially what it said is, we've gotten some amazing information from your audience. Uh, now it's time to start prioritizing. And so we want to do some, like, some surveys or polls uh, so, so look for a form to be set up soon where they'll go, okay, based on what y'all have told us, we think it's either this, this, or this, what do you think? Right. Uh, and they're going to, they're going to try to tailor this and narrow down, like, what do people actually really want out of their, their perfect television connected streaming device, which will probably be able to handle Twitch. Well, in the meantime, if you're anything like us, keep in mind, like uh, we run this studio on doghouse systems systems. Uh, we have two of them, one doing the switching, one doing the, uh, the, the streaming and coding and recording. And uh, Tom, I've said this before. You were here in person when I said the best computers I've ever, ever touched. They're awesome. And if you use promo code cord killers from doghouse systems.com, uh, basically they'll double your memory for free. You can remember twice as much and, uh, and they will, uh, they'll kick us a little bit of cash to keep everything going. Double your memory, double your fun. Let's move on then to, to double my gum. The front lines. Oh. <laughs> Forward. Here we go. Front lines. Woo. All right. We got 60 seconds to talk about each one of these things. Eck, are you ready? I am ready, sir. I will take the first one, Brian. Comcast subscribers can get online, on-demand access to House of Cards Season 1 through a deal struck directly with Sony Pictures Home Entertainment. Orange is the New Black also coming to Comcast's Xfinity Store on May 13th through a similar deal with Lionsgate. So this is one of those moments where it's like, this is the downside. Like uh, Netflix really enjoys being able to say Netflix originals, Netflix exclusive, all those things. But the fact is, Basically, they're the guys who put their stamp on it. They put their sticker on it. And at the end of the day, once something has gone through its peak period, you got to distribute it through other channels or whatever. So then you get people all confused, like, oh, you're giving it to Comcast, but it's an original. And to that guy, I say, uh, watch Cord Killers and you'll understand why. What do you it's say, Eklund? It's almost as if Netflix and Comcast were talking about a deal together a few weeks ago. Somehow. <laughs> I'm almost 100% certain that neither of those two deals are connected. 
Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, look, what is important, he says, right as the clock tips over, Vimeo overhauls video on demand with redesigned homepage themed collections and user libraries. I was talking, uh, again, it's South by Southwest right now, so we were just chit-chatting about all the different uh, uh, portals for this stuff. And man, oh man, has Vimeo done an amazing job of preserving its brand in an era where YouTube has been able to uh, up its resolution to true HD, 1080p, even 4K. If you ask somebody, hey, what video service has the highest quality presentation of everyone? Everyone will say Vimeo, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's the perception is quality. Have you watched much Vimeo content, like films or anything, Eck? I love Vimeo. Yeah, I put I put stuff up actually private videos of, of like the kids for my for the grandparents on Vimeo too because they have that password thing you can do that everything's it's just much clearer on Vimeo. It's a great service. Well, and also I, I, it's funny that you mention that because that's the way I am. I pay for Vimeo yep. to host like like my 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 live stage demo reels and stuff. Good job, Vim. Exactly. BBC Three will go off the air in autumn 2015 in the UK and become an online only channel targeting 16 to 34 year olds. Uh, there's already a hashtag save BBC three movement gathering steam on Twitter. Uh, but 30 million pounds of the budget will be moved to BBC one. Man, are you as annoyed by the very idea that they're even protesting this? It's like nobody loves the That's copper wires that, uh, that, that carry BBC three over you the air. It. It's over the air. Or whatever, who cares? Like, 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 whatever feeling you have about the method by which you used to, b to receive BBC Three, that's what the next generation will experience if they love BBC Three. It's like, uh, no, I don't know. It's just weird to me to see this fetishization of the method of distribution. Eck, does it bother you at all? Thankfully, fifteen to thirty, fifteen and thirty-five year olds will be safe. That's all we know. <laughs> It, just, it just amazes me when they I think it's that. A, I think it's an incredible signpost on on the way to direct television that we were talking about at the beginning of this show. Take Agreed. a whole channel and just be like, fine, we'll just put the shows direct. You can yeah, watch man. whatever you want. Yep. Hey, man, Deadline reports that Sony's Screen Gems will release a film adaptation of The Last of Us. Game creative, uh, creative director Neil Druckmann will, uh, will reportedly be writing on the script. Uh, we're uh, Basically, we're looking at um, the Naughty Dog Last of Us game made into a movie with screen gems. Sam Raimi's Ghost House Pictures will be the production company. They worked on Evil, uh, the remake of Re Evil Dead, so on. So what's weird is I mentioned this and a bunch of people got upset online. They're like, eh, I don't know. I don't want, I love the game so much. Why ruin it by making Hashtag it a movie? Hashtag stop Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, stop Last <laughs> of Us. <laughs> Kill Last of Us. Uh, I'll tell you what, The Last of Us was m one of my top two games from last year. And deservedly so. And to me, like, it was such a great story. I don't care how it gets out there as long as it gets out there. I love it because it's the video game. I love the video game crossover because it just tells you in the future that there won't be one or the other in a way. There'll be, you know, everything will be the same. And I think that's great. Everything should be interactive. Yeah. Torrent Freak has an article on a guy named Sebastian. He's a designer from Buenos Aires, Argentina, who made something called Popcorn Time. It's a software tool that allows users to stream popular movie torrents with the click of a button. Popcorn Time offers instant access to hundreds of films in various qualities and complete with subtitles if needed, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Eck, we've always said, oh, you can torrent, but it's hard. This makes yeah. it really easy. Hooray, hooray for illegal turning of movies. <laughs> now, oh, now, now you say that, and, and, and I understand you don't mean hooray for no. screwing artists out of their royalties, but, no, but do you actually mean yeah. hooray insofar as putting pressure on the existing establishment? Exactly. No, I, I, anything like this is just, um, you know, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube type stuff to me. You know, like this is, this is where it's going to, they're going, and the, you know, the net industry has to figure out a way to work with it, not against it which I know is not their way, but if they can find a way to work with it, this is great. Uh, Apple TV version 6.1 is out. Now, here's the thing. When you think of a new service, a new version coming out, what do you get excited about? You get excited about what they add to the game. Not this time. Now you should get excited about how they take away the crap that you're not actually looking at. It hides channels that you don't like. You pick a channel from the main menu, hold the select button to make the icons dance. Once they start to jiggle, you fling those bastards right off to the screen. Congratulations you uh, for filtering, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, How much does this matter to either of you guys? They're so far behind Roku to me. It's just Whoa! Crazy. Shots fired! They are. They just are. They, they, they're... They're like the boss who doesn't say anything, but things always work out for him somehow. I don't know. That's my opinion. I'm a big Apple person, but with Apple TV, I just 
you know, I'll take my boxy box over it at this point. Apple TV uh, is is getting too many channels. It used yep. to be like, oh, there are only eight channels anyway, so who cares? And this is good. This is going to make it clean and easy. And I think it's a precursor to having a lot more apps, maybe even an app store. Can I extend this for a second? Because I had a real oh run. shoot, I, I had a real run guessed. with my Apple TV. Okay, because uh, do you get this thing, or you know, won't play HDCP content. You know, oh, yeah. this, this, sure. this message. And I guess someone told me, oh, you just got to get a better HDMI cable. I mean, I bought this content. You know, no, this is the it's, I bought. And actually, I, and I think it's just DRM. Covers. So what's going on with that? Because it made me insane. And I, so much so that we ended up buying a season of what we were watching. My wife's watching. Um, well, I'm watching it too. The last season of How I Met Your Mother, I must admit. So we're sitting there and we're watching this. And we had to buy it on. We bought it on Amazon as well because we couldn't get our freaking TV to play it. Yeah, it happens with the iTunes DRM because on the back end, the rights are managed so specifically that if you watch, if you like buy it on iTunes, sometimes you can't watch it on an <laughs> Apple TV because they only have the rights to sell it to you through iTunes and watch it on your laptop. Ugh. That's insane. That's the kind of that's why that's why people leave. Yeah, and I've had that I've had that happen with monitors too, where it's like, oh, you can watch it on your laptop screen, but not your monitor. <laughs> yeah, so dumb. Yeah. All right, it is time now. No, we don't get another extension. It is time now to see what is on our radar. Yeah. What is on our... Whoa. Holy crap, we have an actual radar. It's working, too. Buy that from, like, Army Surplus. Wow. Well, did you see the two blips? I did. I saw your face. Blip for Need for Speed and a blip for Veronica Mars. They're both coming out this week. Now, when you say Veronica Mars, is this the crowdfunded masterpiece yes, that we've is. been waiting for? They I showed it at South by Southwest for a bunch of marshmallows who uh, who who saw it. But there's also the screenings for the for the people who kickstarted it and uh, available in movie theaters. You know, uh, we also heard the night of of easily the best party we've thrown in this house ever. Uh, Brant showed up talking about how at South by Southwest he saw the Harmontown movie and thought it was very, very good. And what was great is uh, Brant's the one who got me into watching or listening to Harmontown. Uh, I still have not really dived into community, but I find myself in the weird position where both Dan Harmon and Kevin Smith, I would much, much, much rather listen to them talk about their art than actually look at, at the art that they're making. Uh, but, uh, but he said that was very good as well. And the only reason I bring that up is because it also premiered on South, at South by Southwest. Let's see what's on screen then. It was smooth. It was good. I feel oh. like we need to add like, hey, what's on the screen to the beginning of that? And then, then it'll flow better. <laughs> then it would be me saying, let's see what's on screen. And then, hey, what's on screen? And then me saying, welcome to on screen, where we talk about the things that All have right. been on our screens. Wait, well, yeah, real quick, what if it was like a robot? You're like, now I want to know what is well, on the screen. Can we, can we add a robot doing that? Yeah. It always works I, with a robot. That's right. I know, I know robots. <laughs> X can maybe loan, loan us a robot. I got done and done. Robot. Uh, what are you watching, Tom? Uh, well, I was gonna let our guest go first, uh, but uh, Eck, can can you can you tell us uh, you, how many times you've seen the Lego Movie now? Um, once in the movie theaters, and someone I know happened to somehow get it on their computer and watched it a couple times then too. Yeah, so yeah, the Lego Movie. I'm into the Lego Movie. I I think it's I think it's one of the best animated movies that they've that anyone's done in a long time, like since like Meet the Robinsons for me. It's, it's, it's so weird because story. like I liked the Lego movie a lot. I mean a whole mm-hmm. lot. My kids, my kids love it. I, I'm only deeply, deeply in like with it. And, yeah. and this is even after I've watched, uh, if, if, if you buy the game, the, the, the most movie licensed games are complete crap. They're, they're shovelware that they contract out to the lowest bidder because they know that they're selling based not on being a playable or interesting game, but instead just because it's got the label on it. In this case, for the first time ever, I got my nine-year-old now today or as of yesterday, 10-year-old to start playing video games. Normally she always gets disappointed because you die or whatever. Like right. you don't you don't right. die in the Lego game. It's just you just have to restart from the uh, back from where you were. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. It's got a really wild ending, um which I liked actually. I I liked the fact that that what they were saying and the way they the way they pulled it off. I mean, part of the joy Brian is definitely like seeing your my son is 8. His whole our whole dining room table is like a Lego world. Yeah. So it has been for years, you know. And uh, he made a four foot Stark Industries building. Like just, it's incredible. So the whole nice. thing wow. is really intense. Um, so watching him 
how much he loved this actually does play into, you know, has to play into it as a father. You're like, oh my gosh, that's just, but, but really the, that's hilarious. There are some funny lines in this movie. I mean, it's really quick. And, and also, uh, you know, we're talking about all the time on here, you know, um, the DRM or what have you, but the fact that they have like a, you know, not a spoiler, but like a Batman just shows up in the middle of the movie. You know, uh, first thing you know, how'd they get Batman? And then it occurred to me, well, wait a second. You know, the Lego's got to deal with all these people. That's right. Well, well, and, and, and you could tell that what they did was they built on existing Lego licenses. And certainly, you know, there have been, I assume, Lego Marvel characters, but none yeah. of those are in the movie. <laughs> you know, That's it's all point. it's all Lego DC characters or whatever. But uh, regardless, like the movie's great in the video game. I definitely give us a, a thumbs up to what's this on the line with Roderick? That you're um, well, Merlin Mann has a show that he does with John Roderick, and it's a, uh, it's really, it's really funny. It's it. John Roderick is the um, singer of a band called um, the Longest Winter, which is an, a Seattle band that sort of came out in the grunge era to a degree. And this podcast, I mean, just for guys like us, I mean, I'm I'm a 45 year old you know man, so I've gone going through all we're all like around that age, right? Um, and it is phenomenal spot on i mean he just the stories they tell the stories it's basically merlin man's just sort of sort of pushing the thing along you can tell but roderick's stories are just awesome i mean it's just it's a it's hilarious it's moving it's um it's it just, resonates with you it really resonates with a 45 year old guy like me you know it's just like <laughs> yeah i'm watching i it. wouldn't understand what it's like to be a 45 year old dad i'm a 39 year old dad well, there you and us it. youngsters don't understand what you old people are like <laughs> <laughs> call them in six years brian then you'll understand <laughs> they had this incredible um podcast the other day where he he gets just a free ticket to go see the miley cyrus concert and he says, I hate everything about Miley Cyrus. I just, I, I, every time I see her, I don't like things she's done. But something told me I should go because I need to know why it is I hate her so much. <laughs> and he went to the show and he was, the, he, was, he was like in a trench coat and it was a first row ticket. So here he is among like all, he's at all 20 year old, not 19, not 21, but 20 year old girls yep. all screaming at the top of their lungs. And me um, standing there in my trench coat looking like, you know, I shouldn't, feel, I didn't belong there at all. And he was literally went through the concert and was blown away by how awesome it was. Yeah. Well, and, and it was just one of these things that hit me. I was, I mean, that's so cool. Yeah. Number one, like that, uh, first of all, I, I totally respect that kind of action. Like if you're going to hate a thing, yeah. at least have the proper words for why, why you hate it and what you don't understand about it. Right. That's amazing. It was, it's a, it's an incredible podcast. It really is. It really is worth it. Uh, I've been, the only things I have been watching, Brian, that you haven't been watching are, uh, walking dead which I still haven't fully caught up for various reasons, uh, but it is character study season, and I think it's really interesting. So I'm enjoying it, but it's very slow moving, and it's definitely not the kind of thing I would recommend people, oh, you have to come back now and join back in. Okay, no, no, no. First of all, you you know what has frustrated me in the past. Would you recommend I, me, Brian Brushwood, come back? Nah, ambivalent. Okay. It, right. It's not going to solve any of those things that you want because it's an entirely different show now. Okay. All right. Uh, I also watched the movie Blue Jasmine that Kate Blanchett won the Oscar for uh, because it was free on my flight uh, to out to Austin. And it was disturbing, but wow, Kate Blanchett can act. She can act her socks off. It was really good. <laughs> right on. Uh, so I watched Cosmos last night. Do we want to talk about Cosmos now or in the... Are, are you going to hang around for this? Cosmos? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, like, we can, can certainly actually, go more in depth and talk about specific critiques of it. Uh, I like the there. book. Dude, I, I also I love everything Carl Sagan. It's amazing. Let's let's yeah, let's talk. Uh, are you are you going to be able to hang around Eckland for the yeah. spoiler gun zone? Or I'd love spoiler to. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, then in that case, we'll talk about that later. And uh, True Detective, I meant to get caught up and watch the finale. Uh, the finale. Uh, the part of me was thrilled that there was troubles with HBO Go, so there was an excuse to where we would finalize. True Detective next week. So I can only go as far as episode four. We can talk about that later on. I have All a right, question on True good. Detective That'll real quick. Though. Just a general question on True Detective sure. for you guys. Well, I haven't seen it yet. We actually just got through. We just started House of Cards. We're about midway through the set. Oh, we the beginning of the second season. Um, my wife and I like movies, but we don't like stress, you know, for whatever reason. We're just neither of us like a movie just gets too like House of Cards gets pretty weird towards the end of the first year. Right. But we got through it. Like she's just we have too much stress in our life in general. Right. So. Is, is True Detective, like Sherlock, you know, it was awesome for us. Man, no, this is so. a really great question. I would say in so many ways, True Detective is unlike any 
procedural or detective or crime cool. solving thing you've ever seen. It's a, uh, to be honest, I, I don't know why. And I'm only four episodes in, but I keep thinking of the tone of seven where it's like, you're, you're oh, onto cool. a bigger, weirder thread. W would you say there's anything to that, Tom? Yeah. I, I think it's kind of twin peaks like, but oh, with the yeah, that's a great metaphor uh, of I, I maybe it's, Ooh, it's so important that he's like frozen with anticipation on what how he's gonna phrase it. Just and keep they cutting back. They for... Achieve it, yeah. Oh man, might, I'm sorry, Tom. I want to say but... the wire, but Treme. It might be Treme meets Twin Peaks. Okay, so you're talking about the pacing is closer to Treme. Yeah, and the reality, the attempt to capture the reality of something, but then they've got a supernatural, mysterious element that's very Twin Peaksy. What's funny is you're saying capture the reality, but it's like it seems like they really, if anything, are trying to capture the surreality of it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, because it's that's it's cool. reality three seen through a twisted glass. Exactly. Right on. Yeah. All right, we'll talk about more of that on the uh, spoiler in time. What now, Tom? Dispatches from the front, Brian. Okay. Let's look at the intro. Hey, kids. Got your email. Thanks for writing. So, uh, Tom, I put more letters in here than I normally would because there was a lot of really short ones. They were sort of all over the map, and I didn't know um, whether... Uh, no, nobody had, like, one big question that blew my mind. So instead, uh, we got from Adam says, uh, hey, holy smokes, I love your podcast. I was wondering if you guys had considered creating a Diamond Club channel for the Roku, maybe. And that immediately made me think of uh, uh, Nicole Spagnolo, right? Yep. D doesn't she have the hookup for that? Can't we talk about doing that? Yeah, she said if we wanted uh, a Roku channel, we should talk to her because she's okay. making them. Well, thank you, Adam. We'll talk to our correspondent. Nicole Spagnuolo. <laughs> uh, Jeff Howe said, hey, guys, after the thousandth recent article about how great it would be, I've just recently installed XBMC on my ATV. Now what? It's not <laughs> obvious. How do you do this? We're not tech support, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> but if you, uh, if, you, if you do a little searching around, there's some really good how-tos out there, especially Lifehacker has a few, uh, or Instructables has a few about getting it set up. I, that is one of the things that daunts people is XBMC is not like, we'll hold your hand and walk you through the setup. You 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 have to do it all yourself. Once you get it set up though, it's great. Exactly. Uh, Norm from Austin says, it seems like most of the cord cutting solutions today all use the HDMI jack. However, most of my TVs are old school and do not have HDMI. So I think the Roku boxes are the best options, but here, but I thought I'd check with the experts. And it was great chatting with you on Saturday. Apparently, he was at our event. Um, you know, I, I I don't know what to tell you, man. Everyone's going HDMI. Well, uh, there's great adapters for this, guys. There really yeah. are. I mean, oh, there I are? Have, um, yeah, there's great adapters for either way. Like, I have an old um, Pong set, like, you know, a serious old Pong set with the single, you know, RCA cable out of it that I've converted into an HDMI thing. It's possible. It's really possible. It's um, yeah. And it's Check possible out, like, the other a Radio way Shack, Best Buy, Fry's, those yep. sorts of places. They're a little bit more expensive because they need to be powered, I think. They do have to be powered. Yeah, they do have to be powered. But they're not they're not that bad. They're not it's they're under not it's way. It's, it's instead of like a couple bucks. of bucks for a wire though, you're talking about 10, 15 bucks probably. So let's uh let's yeah. Tom, let's skip this big one that I have here because I forgot to say who it's from. But uh also Jeff, it says gorilla. Uh and yeah, Jeff. Jeff sent this in. He sent a link to Amazon's Cut the Cord 101, which I thought we had talked about at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we I thought it was it great. Before. Yeah, uh, but I think it's great. Uh, apparently, we need the reminder. Uh, if you go to Amazon, just search Duck Amazon Cut the Cord 101. Sense. You'll find them breaking it all down. They tell you to buy an antenna. They tell you to optimize your internet and set up your, you know, decide on your streaming hardware. Uh, decide on a DVR and, and choose what you want to watch. Um, again, man. Uh, oh, uh, I guess what was, when, when was our episode? Which episode was our whole Cut the Cord special, Tom? Uh, it was at... The the beginning I, of I want to say like the third of February. Does that sound yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's definitely right. I watched I watched that airport that that um, that whole show from uh, an airplane stuck on a blizzard air blizzardy runway in Denver. Oh, that's awesome, <laughs> oh, man! And that's you know it's weird the thing memories. about the score cutting thing is you actually do have these other memories connected to shows now. You know that you never would have normally. I, but I watched that entire show literally from the time we got stranded to the time we took off. So uh, 
Also, we got an email from James asking me to go over my streaming setup. And this is something we've never talked about, Tom. But, uh, you know, Cord Killers is very much a show about people who want to watch, watch what they want, when they want, and whatever device they want. But so many of our audience seem really fascinated with the idea of, of not only being a consumer of this content, but a, a producer of it as well. Would you be interested in doing at least a segment real quick, kind of breaking down the options for live streamers? Right now? No. Down no. the road. I'm just, I'm talking. Oh, I, I, I thought you said real quick. I thought you meant right now. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sure. Do people, I, I would I would throw it out to the audience. That's something you guys want to see because it's sort of turning things on its head. Or would it be better like as a bonus thing that we do separate for those who are interested? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, I definitely I, know that what, there are people in the more, audience who want to see it. I think it's better than you think because uh, one of the things I do, I mean, I live, we live stream a lot of hockey stuff and interviews and things like that, but I also live stream my kids' um, concerts to my, to their, in, to my in-laws in Florida, you know, like <laughs> I'll live stream like that. So definitely there's a lot, there's a definite demand for how to live stream things. Yeah. And I, I don't dispute that at all, whether it needs to be its own show. Yeah. You know, oh, like its you know own what? episode Ganoush. or its own thing, rather G than trying to like stick it in as a segment. Ganoush is saying that maybe here. it that's should be like a bonus, uh, either yeah, for the, that's everyone. what I'm thinking. So you can really treat it correctly. Yeah, or maybe even uh, uh, I don't know, maybe a bonus for our patrons for those who donate one penny or more. Yeah, maybe we we'll could definitely that. go to the patron f people first. Uh, David, and it's a nice behind the scenes thing. David, uh, David writes in. Message. European frustration. <laughs> Having enjoyed this week's episode, I tried to find out if I could watch Hacking the System or Don't Trust Andrew Maine by any legal method in the UK. After many minutes of Googling, I concluded that neither show has any form of UK release. I tried really hard. Then, 10 seconds later, uh, on the Pirate Bay, I found 720p versions already available from BitTorrent. I really do not want to do this illegally. I really want you and Andrew Maine to get uh, the credit for the enjoyment of the shows. What should I do, Torrent or Mass or, or, or Miss? And look, um, I think uh, I suspect that if Andrew was here, we would both agree that both of us would, in all ways, prefer that you watch our content legally. We'd prefer that you did it in a way that let people know how much you like it. Uh, failing your ability to do one or the other, if 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 you physically do not have the ability to watch it legally, then at least figure out a way to show your support for it and spread the word on it. Uh, and and this is the artist's dilemma because as artists, you know, it's like if it were up to me, I would insist that Nat Geo give it out to free to anyone who will, you know, look at them sideways. But of course, I don't own it. That belongs to the Nat Geo. But I will say as as an artist that it would mean a lot to me that uh, if if you do see it, and I ain't here to judge, if you do see it, that you at least spread the word to uh, to to you know increase the popularity of it. Well, that is it for this episode of Cord Killers. Thank you, Eck, uh, for hanging out with us. We definitely gonna have to have you back. I would love to come back anytime. I'm telling you, like I said to you, Tom, before in emails, and I really meant it. Um, all the technology stuff I've learned from you over the years, from Buzz Out Loud to TNT and on has really played a huge factor in my success as a as an internet person. And without it, I don't think I'd be able to support myself. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh well, that's very nice of you to say. Thank you so much for your support uh, of all of my shows. Uh, you you you've been a, a a great patron, literally, like not just Patreon, <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate that. Hockeybuzz.com, of course, yep. is uh, where you find the your life's work essentially. If you're Canadian, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're you know. Canadian like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. Anytime. Anytime.